nothing itself towards teaching or to oh, I had no idea the man. Too bad they didn't nip it in the bud. Sadly, it does appear that this has been going on for a while now. But your aunt somehow caused the students to rally. Then came the last straw. Miss Phillips said that Sam had sass like that little Sam he ever could. And she switched him. And Sam's father came to the schoolhouse all the way and dared Miss Phillips to lay a hand on one of his children ever again. By heavens, do they have a replacement? We are in spring session. Mind you, Miss Phillips never would have gotten to school for another year if her uncle hadn't been a trustee. A bad trustee. Mr. Phillips just leads the other two around by their notes. I declare I don't know what the education on this island is coming to. Well, there is an emergency town meeting this afternoon. Matthew is already there. I was planning on giving Anne a little special time this afternoon. Mrs. Barry is there with her two young ones as well. I saw Doc Anne on the way over here, and I suggested that she came over here. I thought you'd approve. Anne would love to entertain, and it's good that they're not alone. Good thinking, Rachel. About time you took my advice. Fine, by a confused facilities. Homer like so glad we live in a world that they're not over. It would be terrible if we just skipped from September to November, wouldn't it? Did you see the golden maple leaves? Don't they give you a thrill of several crud? Enjoy your golden leaves going to town this afternoon. Rachel and I have a meeting exploring a new school teacher. A new teacher? Really, truly? I hope they're vegan for eager and pet the mind. I yearn for your role model. A mentor to guide me through my journey. Yes, and might you want to entertain Diana this afternoon? Girl, are you in earnest? One does not jest about friendship, Anne. How perfectly lovely. Tea? Those things so nice and grown up. It's so more like I use the rosebud tea. No, oh, indeed. You'll use the old brown one. But you can open the yellow crab with cherry preserves and cut some fruit cake. You can just imagine my ill self hosting and pouring out the tea. And ask Diana she takes sugar. I know she doesn't, but of course last year just if I didn't die. And since you've been such a good girl, there's a bottle half full of raspberry cordial. Now you and I can sample. I'll get the glasses for you. Good day. How is your mother? She's very well, thank you. Tea, please. Sugar, no thank you. Fruit cake. And Mr. and Miss Cuthbert? Quite well. Potato crop is quite abundant. I hope your crop is good too. It's fairly well, thank you. Have you picked many of your apples yet? Oh, ever so many. Marilla was kind and said we have cherry preserves for the week. Such a treat we have to drink. It begins with an R and a C. <laughs> and it's a bright red color. Oh. <laughs> I love bright red drinks, don't you? They taste twice as good as any other color. I want a riddle. How scrumptious the fruit cake is divine. Marilla made this cake. Last time I made cake, I forgot to put the flour in. I was imagining the lovely aesthetic tale, tiny enough. Wait, you love a tragic tale? Tears just rained down over my two blood the cake. But I forgot to put the flour in the cake with a dismal failure. Oh, how tragic. For the cake as well, how are so essential the cakes, you know? Marilla was cross and I wonder. I'm a great trial of her. She is quite a patient woman. But <laughs> now, Time for the yes day this dog. Is that cordial? That's very cordial. Mm -hmm. It was rather hard to find, even though Marilla suggests that I share it. <coughs> it looked almost hidden. Would you like some? <laughs> <laughs> this is awfully nice, Dan. I didn't know raspberry cordial was so nice. You must have some too. You insist. Delicious! I'm real glad you like it. Take as much as you want. <laughs> I'm going to run out and stir the fire up. I will be here. There are so many possibilities of our keeping their mouths in the air. Indeed. Divine. <laughs> I've ever drank. It's ever so much nicer than Mrs. Lynn's, although she brags of her so much. Oh, this doesn't taste a bit like hers. I should think Marilla's raspberry cordial will be much nicer. 
for the villa. The villa. Well, she's a better cook than my mother. My mother needs the maid to cook. She honestly can't cook as well as as well as you. Awful sad. 
sick, she's got croup, and nobody else was around. The maid was useless, so I sent her to go get Anne for knew the doctor was out of town, and oh, I was so scared. What happened then? Anne came over, calm as can be, she told me. Don't cry, Dee. I know just what to do for crew. I've nursed many, many children. That must have been frightful for you both, but how could Anne know? She is young like us, too. Anne took care of three sets of twins all by herself. Anne nursed the littler ones in the orphanage when no one else would. I don't know how she did it. It can be a strain to care for one person. I had her once. God, it felt like an accident. Yeah. I lost my little sister that way. She was so helpless. Anne went straight to work and even brought medicine to make Minnie's cough productive, but when Minnie stopped breathing, oh, Anne flew into action, pounding on Minnie's lungs in different positions, and, and she saved my sister. The doc said that little redheaded girl's the smartest they can make them. I tell you, she saved that babe's life. She's a natural healer. Oh, hi, Anne. What you did for Minnie Minnie. You were so brave. I couldn't have done it. Well done, Anne. Smart Nikki. Yeah. Here's a bookmark. A yellow panty, a cup from a floral kettle. And a brand new pencil. And I can teach you a perfectly new algae pattern of knit lace. Perfect for trimming it. Here's a perfume bottle. Perfect for keeping slate water in it and seeing fitting with Kim and our issue. I am a mid star for you. So nice to be appreciated. And Aunt Mom is so full of thankfulness and is so grateful for your thinking. She's forgiven the or has very cordial incident and wishes our friendship to continue on in earnest. Oh, Diane's so happy! It's wonderful beyond the power of words to express. You can see before you a perfectly happy person. There should be a new teacher today. Her name is Miss Mural Stacy. What a perfectly romantic name! My father says she's a. <laughs> Sometime. If you want. 
No, I always liked your dad's eyes. They're kind of like yours. You know, soon I may not be able to remember his face. I can't stop it from happening. He's proud of you. Every time I see him, he smiles like this. He captured his likeness so easily. Would you mind if I come over tomorrow so I might be able to finish it? Thanks. I would appreciate it. Oh, he caught Anne's fragility and fire. <laughs> that determination. <laughs> you know her determination well. Wait, Charlie, are the fish nibbling for you? No, the turtle cleaned off my hook. We should be studying, not fishing. Why can't we do both? How do we start? Motion to uh, open the floor. I second this motion. Motion passes. The floor is opened. What subject? Um, I think girls <laughs> are absolutely confounding. Yeah. Look, I may be able to get straight A's in all my classes, but I can't manage to talk to Anna without infuriating. <laughs> You'll never be able to live down calling her carrots. <laughs> you sound like one of the jobs in the lab. I tried to make it up to her. I gave her my notes when she was sick. I offered her an apple from my orchard. She threw it away. You know, I tried to count. I don't think I like Josie anymore. <laughs> Whenever I'm loud, she's angry. Whenever I'm quiet, she's angry. No matter what I'm doing, she's just always angry. <laughs> I think Ruby likes you. <laughs> Why would you think that? Because uh, she's waited for you at the door the past few yeah. days. She wouldn't let anyone else open the door for her. She's kind of cute, I guess. And you have a chance with her. More than with Josie, at least. I think you should bring her a flower. Yeah. <sighs> Might as well. Motion for Booty to boo Booty. Second it. Let's take it to a vote. <coughs> All in favor? <sighs> Motion passes. Next item. Motion for discussion on just how infuriating girls are. Second day! Girls, they get insulted and yes. you try to compliment yes. them. But if you annoy them, you show them you like them, they call you pretty <laughs> They don't like when I make them spit milk out their nose. But they can shoot a foot or two if they tie your leg. They like you when you don't want them you to. You can't get them to start liking me. Yeah. You do want them to. And, and they, they always never... seem to compare you to your friends and sometimes even your enemies. Yeah. And they never go against fighting or dirty or play sports with us. <laughs> and why do you look so cute when they're angry? <laughs> uh, do you like him? No, no, no. She's just a friend. Oh, it's a really nice sketch. Thank you. You want it? Why would Gilbert want your stupid drawings? It's not stupid. It's actually really nice. Thank you. Oh, well, uh, want to share something, Gilbert? Not yet. <sighs> Motion to end debate on how infuriating girls are and that Gilbert will get dibs on him. Second bid. Let's take it to a vote. All in favor? <sighs> Motion passes. Unanimously. <sighs> well, see you guys tomorrow at school. Test one or something? Test one or something. I have somewhere to put it. Here, yeah, let's take the road home to see if we can find any rare vessels. <laughs> Mentor. Mentor? 
Me, I want to organize a class amongst my band students who need to study to take the entrance examinations into Queens. I've already spoken with Matthew and Marilla on the subject. What do you think about yourself, Anne? Would you like to go to Queens to study to become a teacher? Oh, it's been the dream of my whole life! That is for the last six months, ever since Gilbert and Joel began to talk to studying for the entrance. This is a dream that has merit, Anne. But I didn't say anything about it because I thought it would be perfectly useless. I'd love to be a teacher. But what if you tried to be expensive? You've already earned a partial scholarship, and Matthew and Marilla want you to be prepared. So you join the Queen's class if you'd like, Anne. I'm really extremely grateful to you all, and I'll study as hard as I can to give credit to you. I'm learning not to expect much of you, John. I think I can hold my own in anything else over hard. I dare say you'll get along well enough. You are bright and diligent. Aside from sneak reading, you want to start right away. I look so forward to Latin and French. But geometry is the bane of my existence. It is important to pace yourself. Steady progress is best, and you won't be ready to try the entrance for a while yet. But it is well to begin now and be thoroughly grounded. I will take more interest than ever in my studies now because I have the most worthy purpose in life to be a teacher like you, Miss Stacy. I should like to think so. I think it is a very noble profession. Can I tell you a secret? My mother and father were school teachers. Do you think that? that they would be proud of me, and I am sure they are. I am. It is lovely to see you again, Josephine Barry, after all these years. It has been long overdue. Normally my brother's family comes to town to visit me, not the other way around. <laughs> In fact, my niece Diana and your adopted child woke me in summer fright before the rooster crowed today. Oh, do tell. I was sleeping rather peacefully, given the way many may snore. <laughs> when I was awoken by someone jumping on top of me, <laughs> Diana tried to say it was her, but your red-haired snipe stopped her and admitted full responsibility. Oh, her child has too much imagination for her own good. Yes. She is as bright as I come, and has such red, red hair like you did, Marilla. Oh, hush now, Matthew loves to spoil her rod. Oh, that's the truth. With those soulful eyes, she must have wound around her little finger. <laughs> I just told her, with a twinkle in my eye, to look before she leaves in the future. Oh, great. <laughs> I have a mind for her to visit me when she attends Queens. Oh. And it seems like last was dozens of opportunities before her. The hard part? Choosing just one. Well, you didn't choose just one, Josephine Barry. You somehow managed to teach Marilla and I when we were young. And you were a writer and an artisan as well. I plan to devote my entire life to teaching, so I never, ever marry, or pay a salary for teaching, or any other career. But a husband won't pay you anything. And we'll <laughs> rather ask for your share of the Emmy Butter money. I want my own egg and butter money, and that is that. Well, my husband has always given me anything I asked for, and plenty much more without my bothering to ask. He is one of the good ones. You have one of the good ones, Marilla. You're smart, and sweet, and funny. I did, and it pains me still to talk about it. But it wasn't in the cards for me. I have to take care of everyone now, and bygones are bygones. See here? And has plenty of time ahead of her to figure out what she wants. And you, Marilla Cuthbert, are still alive and kicking. Oh. If you choose to go courting, you may. Oh, fiddlesticks, <laughs> fiddlesticks, you're giving me a headache. My little headaches always led to you feeling somewhat sarcastic. Rachel, you are the living dick. <laughs> and as for your tongue, it's a marvel. It isn't clean worn out. Oh, that never stopped me before. Well, oh, now, it's getting late, and I'm expected for dinner at my brother's. I expect they are expecting me to pay for some lessons or other this summer. Last year was French. Oh, I'm sure. This year, maybe music. <laughs> I may be in for a recital. Would anyone care to accompany me? Oh, well, we wouldn't want to distract you from your many admirers, Miss Josephine Bear. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess being a rich spinster has its benefits. <laughs> and its costs. Still nice to have family. It is, like the obligation. 
time from the perspective of parenting, Diana, Rufus, you are now the proud parents of this young baby who <laughs> came together. A lot can we learn from parenting as a team, Charlie. Responsibility, the fragility of life, like <laughs> budgeting resources, and how working as a team goes a long way. And Gilbert, you are the last happy family. <laughs> your experiment grade will be determined by the safe return of your egg child one week from today. Class dismissed. And Anne, Gilbert, it is time to put aside this pain fuse. It is the need for you. Now let's use your energy more effectively. And Gilbert, I'm sorry that your father is. You are in my prayers. Gilbert, how is your dad? The doctors say to prepare myself. Oh, sorry, Gilbert. You know how you feel. Why? Because you're an orphan? You never even knew your parents. You never, you never got close to them. You're right. At least you didn't grow up an orphan. You know your dad. You have memories. I just have imagined what could have been. Uh, Anne, why were you always so aloof to me? Aloof? Aloof. Fiery. Well, I guess I can be a little fiery now and again. Ruby called dibs. What? Dibs! Ruby called dibs on you three whole years before I met you. And Josie said that no one would ever talk to me again if I ever talked to you. Ever! I would have been the new one I didn't love them hating me. Ruby liked me. You can't be serious. <laughs> the sun rose and set with you. Well, I guess I just wasn't looking at her ever. I guess I was just looking at Apricots. Well, so what goals are we going to have for raising this baby? Do you like Xavier as a name? Or Cordelia! <laughs> Wait, what is your father's name? John. His name is John, yeah. I would like that. Well, now I guess we should talk about what rules we should have as parents and go from there. Shall we begin? Well, now, I don't know. Did you ever go 
recording, Matthew? Well, no. <laughs> so you have been, have, so you have had a bit of romance in your life, too? Yes, I suppose you might call it that. <laughs> you wouldn't think so to look at me, would you? But you can never tell about people from their outsides. What happened? There was a time before my brother died, but that door closed when he left this earth. Everybody has forgotten about me and Ellen. Oh, I had nearly forgotten it myself. But it all came back to me when I saw you and Gilbert at the gate last night. And Marilla? There was a fine fellow, John, the local lad, who's worth his salt. But he didn't pass muster with our mother, for no one would have been good enough. Or Marilla. Marilla. Marilla was smitten. That is, as smitten as Marilla can be. And her face would light up when he entered the room. Marilla? Who? It was Gilbert's pa, John Blythe. And I remember when he came around. He said Marilla had the face of a rosebud and how her smile shone. Was she happy? Oh, she was. Could have stayed so. Then Ma ailed, and Marilla felt duty bound to take care of her and of me. Marilla started a fight with John, for which she would never apologize. John Life tried for a while to make it right, yet that was the end of it. Poor Marilla. Well, what's done is done. Matthew, I know I want to get married someday. Have an exquisite bridal gown. But these days I'm not sure if I only want the wedding and not the husband. Is something wrong with me? Not enough. Dad, sometimes I think having a family, being a wife, and truly being loved. <laughs> if there's one thing I know now, Anne, it's that it's okay to find your own path. And yours, yours is going to be a good one. I can see it. I hope so, Matthew. For I want to be seen as more than just a girl. I want to be more than Lady Cordelia. Does that sound silly? Not at all. But sometimes I think I want it all. And it is so confusing. I imagine the Lady Cordelia brought many adventures. Dad, that life would be so exciting. I'd rather just have one good though. You need one with a smart mind for you. And a uh, temperate nature. <laughs> you like winning quite a lot, man. I don't care whether guilt, whether anybody gets ahead of me in school or not. Funny you mention Gilbert now. He seems to walk these ways oftener than he used to. I didn't think you and Gilbert were such good friends that you'd spend half an hour at the gate talking to him. We haven't been, we've been good enemies, but we've decided that it'd be much more sensible to be good friends in the future. Were we really talking for half an hour? It feels like only a few minutes. But you see, we've had three years lost of conversation to catch up on. Good conversations are worth their weight in gold. My hand needs them. I am your Anne. But with Diana, with school, with my imagination, there are so many different hands in me. That might be why I'm such a troublesome person. Hush now. You've never been any such thing. If I was just your Anne, it would be ever so much more comfortable. But then it wouldn't be half so exciting. Exciting. And once you asked me why exactly the roads were red. Yes? Well, it turns out it's because they're bursting with iron. And Ed, you have iron flowing through your veins. You're bursting with strength, Ed. And don't you forget it. You can be anything you choose. Nothing. And no one can stop you but you.
taking on my future, Marilla. What about? I am a turquoise. Many of my friends seem to be deciding their whole lives right now. What should I be? Should I be a teacher or a wife or something else altogether? Or another paths might leave before me. You aren't the only one pondering, for it feels as though the world is changing. Some people seem prone to bucket themselves as if they're frozen in time. What do you think, Anne? I don't think it provides the best scope for the imagination. Matthew reminded me not to pigeonhole myself. That's my sweet Anne. You should decide for yourself on what paths you may want to travel for Anne. And you never were one to run away from an adventure. But this is a real world, Merla. If I were a man, I think I'd be a minister. They can have such an influence for good. <coughs> if their theology is sound, then it must be thrilling to preach splendid sermons and stir your hearers' hearts. Why can't women be ministers, Merla? Well, if you ask me, women do much of the unofficial preaching as it is. Oh, why not? <laughs> I think a woman would make a splendid minister. Well, if you ask me, when any need needs to be met, social functions, church teas, money to be raised, women are who they turn to to do the work. They want to be so many things, Merla. An author, a statesman, an educator. My dear Diana, Thinking of asking her future husband, whoever that may be, for permission to have a career. I would love to have children and a husband. It would have to be the right one. I am like you, Merle. I do not want to have to ask permission to live. All the more reason to decide on what you want to be and stick to it, Anne. We will be right here at the ready, loving you forward. Maybe there are a few paths I can explore. You have a swift and nimble mind, Anne. Sounds like you're using it. And I've been kind of strict and harsh with parenting you, maybe. But you mustn't think I don't love you as well as Matthew did for all of it. I want to tell you now, while I can, that you've been my joy and comfort ever since you came here to Green Gables. Oh, girl, I knew you loved me. It's just so nice I just couldn't help but think of the little girl you used to be. And I wish you could have stayed a little girl longer. But you're growing up now, and you're getting so, so tall and stylish. I just couldn't help but get so lonesome thinking it all over. Oh, Merle, I'm not a bit changed, not really. I'm just pruned out and branched out. <laughs> Real me is in here just the same. It won't matter a bit how much I change outwardly. My heart, I shall always be your little Anne, who will love you and Matthew and dear Green Gables more and more every day of her life. Of her coming to Green Gables. If it was luck. No, 
I don't believe there's any such thing as chance. It was providence, because the Almighty saw we needed her, I reckon. Oh, Matthew, how's your heart? Matthew had a bad spell with his heart Thursday, and the doctor said he mustn't have too much excitement. I'm all right. Wild horses couldn't have kept me away. Well, Matthew, it shouldn't be so hard for you. You aren't exactly looking for excitement. But please don't do very heavy work, either. Oh, telling Matthew not to work is like telling him not to breathe. Oh. <laughs> you must take care of yourself for me, Matthew. You are my home. For you, Anne. <coughs> Green Gables will be quieter now. Are you sure I should go? I can't stay. And do you remember once when you said you wanted to be a go? Yes. Well, I still do. It's time to spread your wings and fly, Anne. It's a serious thing to grow up, isn't it? It is indeed. It's such a good family, I ought to grow up successfully. I'm sure if I don't, it will be my own fault. I feel it's a great responsibility because I only have the one chance. If I don't grow up right, I can't go back and do it all over again. But you can always fly home, man. I, we, will be waiting here for you at Green Gables. Goodbye, my Matthew. Goodbye, my Marilla. Safe journey, and Shirley Cuthbert. I hope for the best mom and the best dad I ever could have asked for. Well then, here we are. You know, I have a feeling that life will never quite be the same again. Gilbert, I am positively certain that life will never be quite the same as it was in those olden days. You know, speaking of which, I have a gift for you. What is this? Your chalkboard apricots. You have this all these years? What can I say? I'm sentimental. <laughs> and good things? Or work for you. Besides, Anne, I don't think either of us could have gotten so far without the other experience. Thanks, Gilbert. I'll let you hold on to it for safekeeping. And can I hold your ballast for you? I can hold it myself. I know you can hold it yourself, Anne. I'm simply offering to light your body. My whole world is in this bag. Mine too. Gilbert, I want to Spread my wings and fly. I don't want to clip your wings, Anne. You know, I always admired your free spirit. You couldn't come back to me. They were clipped. Are you ready, Anne? I am. I can get on the right track. Me too. Gilbert, do you see that big blooming cherry tree down the lane? The first time I came here, I wanted to climb up to its blooming branches and either all night. How my imagination spurred on me. Now I'm journeying even farther away. Let's go. All aboard! 